My name is Renee Cormier and I'm an avian ecologist with Point Blue Conservation Science. And we were formerly called PRBO Conservation Science and we've been um, studying birds and their ecosystems since 1965. Today we are um, working in Pine Gulch Creek. We're in the Bolinas Lagoon Open Space Preserve. We are in a riparian or creekside habitat, so willows and alders that grow along a creek. Um, this habitat is really important for many species of land birds. Um, the vegetation is very complex, lots of layers of herbs and shrubs and trees. Just outside of that is um, tidal marsh and the Bolinas Lagoon, which is home to millions of water birds um, throughout the year. Today we are mist netting or um, banding birds and we set up fine mesh or nylon nets along a habitat where we think birds will be crossing. And so it's set up almost like a volleyball net and the net is so fine that birds don't see it as they're focused on one area beyond the net. Um, the net essentially disappears. That's why they're called mist nets because it's hard to see. The extraction process can be tricky, especially when you're just learning, but the good thing is that most birds actually end up getting captured the same way. Once you get that pattern down, um, it can become pretty easy for an experienced bander. The net goes around um, their wings and their head, and so we can carefully remove that. It's almost like taking off a cardigan. Some birds, like song sparrows, are always very squirmy and feisty. Um, other birds, many warblers, are very docile and, and seem calm, or what we would interpret as being very calm in the net. Once we safely extract um, or remove a bird from our um, mist nets, then we take it back to a central location where we have um, various tools and other measuring devices set up. Every bird is banded with a uniquely numbered aluminum band. And that band fits like a little bracelet around the bird's leg. And the bird is then marked for life. So anytime we recatch that bird, we know which individual it is. Um, we then determine the species and the age and sex if possible. And we take a few measurements like the length of the wing and the length of the leg. We blow all over the birds. We're checking for uh, a variety of things. Birds store fat um, in the furculum or the wishbone area, and it looks yellow um, compared to their pink or purplish colored skin. And so we can assess how much fat they're storing. We can look for birds in breeding condition. If the females incubate, they get an incubation patch where they lose all of the feathers um, on their belly so they can warm the eggs, the eggs develop. By having a bird in the hand that's marked, we get two very important pieces of information. One being the age of that bird, um, so we can see um, what's the ratio of young birds to adult birds. And that gives us an indication of how good the reproductive season was. Then also, because the birds are banded and they keep that band for their whole lives, we can actually look at survival of birds over time. And we can link these things to things that are going on in the natural world, big climate patterns and habitat variables. We recently did an analysis of trends in the mist netting data over just the past 11 years. And we found a lot of the populations of songbirds to be relatively stable. Um, and that's great news. A lot of migratory songbirds in particular, um, but land birds and songbirds all over North America have been declining over um, recent decades. One might think that doing something like this um, time and time again could get monotonous, but really banding birds um, is always, every day is different. You're always catching different birds, different species. When you have a bird in the hand, there's just so many fine details that you might not see through your binoculars. Little unique differences between species, similar species, or um, even within a species of birds. 